Hello, everybody, and uh, apologies for that uh, slight technical uh, problem we had there. Hopefully, you're now able to see the slides that uh, we're showing here. Um, if someone could um, confirm that they can see and hear the slides um, using the questions panel, that would be much appreciated. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for all those people who just responded as requested. Um, I think we may have lost Sue for the moment, but um, um, she was explaining how uh, why CHIT is working with CMI. Uh, Sue, are you back with us yet? No. Okay. Not to worry. Um, um, but I think she was about to hand over to, to introduce me, and um, I can give you then some background to uh, CMI and what it is that we do. Okay, CMI, Chartered Management Institute, we are the only chartered body committed to excellence in management and leadership. Uh, we've been around since 1947, with our Royal Charter being awarded in 2002, uh, and the Chartered Manager title was launched in 2003. We currently have a membership community of over 130,000, predominantly, predominantly in the UK, but also uh, in, in many other countries as well. Our vision uh, is one where we see better led and better managed organizations. And you don't need to read the news for long to find examples of organizations that could clearly have benefited from being better led and better managed. Our mission, how we wish to achieve this, is to increase the number and the standard of professionally qualified managers. Now, we feel there's a real issue with quality of management and leadership, not only in the UK, but in other countries. We surveyed uh, a number of uh, managers and asked them how effective they thought their line manager was. And the, the results were startling. 43% um, of people actually rate their line manager as being ineffective or highly ineffective. Now, that's really quite an alarming statistic. Um, and obviously, the challenge for us is to see that, uh, to try and ensure that we're not part of that 43%, that we're able to um, give people the confidence that we are able to manage and lead effectively when that's part of our role. And as our roles are developed within organizations, obviously, management and leadership becomes more and more important. Can, can I just say I'm, I'm back in the room? Great. Okay, thank you. Um, we've had some great feedback from people confirming that they can um, see and hear the, uh, um, the, the, the um, uh, slides, so that's all working. Great. Right. So, okay. Um, so, um, is it any wonder that there's a problem with management and leadership when for many of us it's not our core set of competencies? We are accidental managers. As our careers progress on the basis of being good at one job, we're given additional responsibilities um, for which we may not have been trained or may not have had any, have had any formal qualification. Only one in five managers in the UK are actually trained to do the job of managing and leading. Still, two-thirds of employers are offering no management training, and the average manager can wait as long as 10 years to actually receive formal training uh, in, in, in this, these, these skills. And we fail to utilize what works. By that, I mean uh, we have lots of research that shows that um, professional qualifications, the sort of uh, uh, awards offered by CMI, are really effective. Um, and so they're, they're a key route towards trying to address this challenge of accidental management. The um, cost of bad management it can be very significant. Um, we feel that it's, uh, it's something that gets behind 56% of corporate failures and can cost as much as 20 billion a year. And there's a clear correlation between the quality of management and leadership and the uh, success of an organization. Um, the cost of bad management is much higher in declining organizations. But on a personal level, um, you know, bad management can really stress people out. It can double the level of employee stress and it's often said that people don't leave organizations, they leave managers. So um, this is a key issue that we feel needs addressing. The good news is that when organizations and individuals do address this challenge, uh, there are very clear benefits uh, that, that accrue from that. Organizations can see an increase in performance of up to 23%. Uh, by investing in management and leadership, and individual productivity can be increased by 32%. And that's really at the root of all this, this challenge around individual productivity, um, because we know certainly in the UK we have a big challenge with that, and it's something that's seen in many other countries as well. So investing in management and leadership is a way of addressing that issue of uh, both individual and organizational productivity. So. One of the routes to one of the routes to addressing this is to um, seek out the, the getting the chartered manager accreditation, which is what this presentation is primarily around. 
Charter Manager is the premier accreditation for the professional manager and only CMI can award this protected title. We've looked at the standards that are required to become um, a chartered engineer, incorporated engineer, or indeed a, a town planning professional. Uh, and we're able to give people access, who hold those awards, access to what we call our qualified route. We feel that you already meet the qualification requirement that we're looking to, uh, to for in order to progress towards the Charter Manager Assessment. Becoming a Chartered Manager demonstrates that you have the knowledge to manage and lead effectively, the experience uh, uh, of this as well, that you adhere to our code of ethical conduct, and that you have a commitment to your continuing professional development. But on a personal level, what we find is that uh, people who go through this process um, also feed back to us really positively that um, you know, the, the, the reflective process of becoming a Chartered Manager is something that can really build on people's self-confidence and give them uh, you know, the, the additional confidence to go forward in their career. We have research that backs this up. We uh, surveyed 535 chartered managers as part of a, a ref refresh of some research we first ran in 2012. Uh, and there's a link there that uh, you can access should you wish uh, to see the research yourself. There were three key findings from the research. Firstly, chartered managers make better managers. 96% said they use the award as proof of their experience of leading people and managing change. Those are the two core competencies that we'll be uh, looking at in the moment when I show you the, the submission form uh, that are core to the Charter Manager process. 90% agreed that the status shows their integrity and commitment to ethical behaviour. And uh, the key one here, 83% uh, sort of said that they were, were sure that, that they were better managers as a result of having achieved this star chartered status. The second key finding was that chartered managers make more confident leaders. As I've already referenced, um, uh, self-awareness and self-confidence are two things that were reported very strongly from people who go through the process. And 92% use chartered manager to showcase their continual learning and growth. And then the third finding was that chartered managers very clearly achieve results. Um, we have looked at uh, the, the submissions that people provide and uh, we're able to calculate that on average a chartered manager adds value to the degree of to 391,000 for their employer. How do they do this? Well, there's a number of ways. Through improving operations, through uh, developing new products, exceeding their targets, uh, or indeed through other things like saving costs and uh, putting in new governance processes. So. Whilst many chartered managers um, are providing impacts that have financial value to the bottom line, not all of them do so. So there are things like process improvements and, and governance uh, improvements that can uh, also be referenced here. So that's the, 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 the research and the three key findings. Um, People can become charter manager at, at many different stages in their career. As you'll see from this chart, um, many um, become charter manager when they're in perhaps middle uh, management roles. Uh, many also in, when they are in senior or, or uh, director roles. But it's important to stress that charter manager is something that can help you with uh, progression throughout your career. Don't check, just take our word for it though. Here are a couple of gentlemen who are chartered engineers and also chartered managers. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Stratton says, combining sound management skills with strong engineering background is a powerful combination that can provide a strong competitive edge. Continuous professional development in both can set you ahead of your peers. And then uh, Andy Miller, Chartered Man Engineer, Chartered Manager, says, just like engineer, manager can mean many different things to different people. So just like CNG, having C Chartered Manager status demonstrates that I can be trusted to employ a high level of professionalism in my management work. So hopefully that's given you um, some background to uh, why we think this is important and some feedback from, from, from some individuals. Um, Sue, could you now just uh, clarify for us who's eligible for the award? Yes, thanks, Kevin. Um, I mean, all of the, uh, the benefits that you, you've talked about from becoming Chartered Manager um, and the, the reasons for doing it, I think, can be um, usefully applied to our members who are chartered engineers, incorporated engineers, or transport planning professionals. Um, so the eligibility criteria, uh, you need to be a current member of CIHT. So hopefully those of you who are a little bit tardy with your subscription payments better run and uh, see to that. Um, so 
current member of CIHT and you need to hold one of those three qualifications, CNG, ING or TPP. Uh, there is a requirement for um, five years management experience, but in a sense that uh, has already been taken into account when you uh, applied for your professional qualifications with CIHT because one of the, the requirements we look for is that you have those five years experience, um, which in include management competence. Um, CMI routes uh, for other uh, CIHT members are available, but this particular route links very much into professional qualification. Um, and I, I think, I was, as I was saying earlier, uh, being a technical specialist is great, being able to solve technical problems, terrific, but if you can't deliver projects, if you don't have the management competence to um, to work with, to manage resources, to provide leadership, all of those good things uh, that chartered managers are able to do. If you don't have that, then actually ultimately um, you're going to find that you're, you're not uh, as successful as you could have been in your career. So really this is um, the, uh, the complementary qualification to the one that you hold at the moment. Um, on our website, you may, well, I'm sure you've already seen this because you're, you're dialing in today. Uh, we do have a page on the Chartered Management Manager Qualification. And at the bottom, if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, there is an Apply Now button, which does what it says on the tin. When you click it, um, you'll, your um, interest will be expressed to CMI, and they will send you all of the, the relevant information. And I think Kevin's going to take you through that application process now. Yes, thank you, Sue. Okay, the process. Um, once you've uh, decided you wish to progress with this, um, you click on that link on the CIHT webpage. This will then take you into the online joining form where you're asked a couple of simple questions about uh, your uh, the number of years management experience you have, and also you're asked to confirm that you hold one of the uh, qualifying designations. You'll be asked to pay the application fee uh, using a credit or debit card. And then you will uh, progress on to the assessment. We send out the form. Um, there are two routes. Um, you can either take what we call our written assessment route, which is where you fill in the template yourself. And we'll be having a look at the submission template in a moment. But an alternative route is our professional discussion route, whereby you will have a couple of uh, telephone interviews with the assessor who will write up the evidence on your behalf. So that's a great way for people who are finding, uh, who, who prefer to you know, perhaps uh, uh, talk rather than write uh, and who uh, find, might, might find it uh, difficult to find the time to complete the assessment themselves. There is a final uh, formal telephone interview to complete the process, after which CMI takes up references and will confirm the results to you. Let's take a look at the, the submission template so you've got an idea about exactly what you would be getting yourself in for if you decide to progress here. This is the template for the written submission. Uh, as I mentioned, professional discussion is an alternative uh, and you are able to, um, uh, it's essentially the same form but it's filled in on your behalf uh, if you go for the professional discussion route. Um, we provide you with some background about what you're going to have to do as part of the process and the role of your assessor advisor. Uh, we tell you a little bit about the CMI Code of Professional Conduct that you'll be signing up to as part of this. And we capture just a few simple details about uh, who you are and how we can contact you. Um, for um, people who are outside of the UK, we will very often use, the, uh, use, use tools like Skype to um, uh, conduct those interviews. And um, we then, um, again, providing you with links to the Code of Conduct, we have basically a number of questions here that starts with an introduction whereby we ask you to set the scene and tell us a little bit about your role and the organization that you work for. Uh, and you'll see there's supporting text in the, in the gray boxes uh, that gives you an idea about the sort of things we're looking for. Question two is where we ask you to describe your key achievements and contribution over the last 18 months. And again, there's suggestions here for the sort of things that we'll be looking for. So this is where you start to, to, to outline your achievements. We're then asking you to reflect on that, and I mentioned earlier the two core competencies that we're looking for, the first of which is the ability to lead people. And again, there's some suggestions, the sort of things we're looking for. An important thing to, to stress here is that the um, skill of leading people is not something that requires you necessarily to have direct line management responsibility. 
Many chartered managers do indeed have line management responsibility, uh, but you can exercise the, the, the skill of leading people in, in, in all sorts of ways uh, through uh, influencing people through matrix management structures, uh, managing external uh, stakeholder relationships, contractor relationships. So um, yeah, a common common query we get is, um, you know, I don't line manage people, so can I, can I do this? Well, the answer is, is yes, you can. The second core competence we're looking at is the ability to manage change. Um, change is, uh, you know, it seems to be a constant in many organisations. And uh, so again, we're, we've got a number of um, uh, sort of supporting pieces of information there that will give you an idea of what exactly it is we're looking for here. We then ask you to identify your principal learning lessons. So to reflect on, on the evidence you've provided and identify the key things that you've uh, learned from this process so that that can then be used to identify your future learning plans. Um, CPD is, 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 a, is a core part of the Charter Manager process, and uh, we have a range of resources that can help support you with that, uh, uh, should you need. So that's the template. Um, um, and, and this is the cost. This is the, the, obviously will be of interest to you. There are the two routes you can go, either to become a chartered member or a chartered fellow of CMI, and to take either the written or the professional discussion routes. And uh, you can see there what the, co the, the, co the year one cost would be, and that's going to include the fee for you to become be assessed to become a chartered manager, and also the year one membership fee. Now, as a member of CIHT, as part of this partnership, you get a 50% discount off of the membership fee that CMI requires for this offer, uh, and we will continue to honour that um, when you renew your um, membership with us, your chartered membership with us, um, as long as you retain your your um, retain the membership of CIHT. Feedback we get from people is that they find the whole process of becoming a chartered manager a really supportive process. Um, and again, referring back to the research, 92% say that the process was well supported by the, their assessor, that it was simple and clear, and 84 said that, the, that they found the process to be challenging, but definitely rewarding of their effort. You have up to 12 months to complete the assessment process um, once you've received the forms. Um, but we have known people to become chartered in, in, in as little as six weeks. Um, so you will receive reminders if you sign up with us, uh, if, if, if uh, you've not had time to complete it. Um, but uh, as mentioned, the, the professional discussion route is a great way for people to, um, you know, to give you a more focused approach to this uh, with the scheduled interviews with your, uh, with your assessor. Once you become a chartered manager, uh, as a member of CMI, there are a range of additional benefits that you have access to that complement the benefits you already receive as a member of CIHT. Uh, we have two magazines that we send out to members. We have uh, very active social media channels. Our LinkedIn and Twitter um, accounts uh, have, a, have some great uh, information on them. We have uh, regional and national networking events. Um, in particular, I mentioned there is our, our CMI Women Network. That's, uh, uh, they run some terrific events. We have things like a mentoring scheme, a career development center, a, a range of benefits that you can access through uh, the link shown there, managers.org.uk backslash benefits. I want to just very briefly focus on one of the benefits, though, the access to our online body of knowledge about management and leadership, uh, which gives you access to uh, a wide range of resources in video, ebook, uh, electronic journal, e-learning, uh, text base, all sorts of different formats, videos, etc., that will address your management and leadership needs, whether this be dealing with a practical challenge in the workplace uh, or a longer-term program of professional development. So uh, this portal, Management Direct, is available to all members, uh, and you have access to that if you progress to become a charter manager. As a charter manager, you have the uh, option to use the post nominals CMGR MCMI if you become a chartered member, and MC CMGR FCMI for chartered fellow. And as I mentioned before, the uh, renewal fees um, are held at the 50% discounted rate in subsequent years, uh, as long as you retain your CIH membership. So I hope that's uh, given you a good overview. Apologies for the technical challenges we had earlier. Um, Sue, did you have any final thoughts before we move into the questions phase? No, Kevin, that's been really useful. Thank you. Um, I should hold my hand up and say that I'm going through this particular process myself at the moment. And the two things that I've found is, firstly, 
it's a, it is a really interesting and useful process to start thinking about the way you manage um, people and resources um, and, and start to really get a feel for what type of manager you are and, and where you might improve. Uh, also, I have used the, the CMI resources and I found them to be extremely good. So in terms of adding another um, source of advice and guidance um, to your to your memberships, uh, I would I would recommend them. Okay, great. Well, um, uh, if uh, any of you do have questions, please do free, free, feel free to use the questions panel. Um, I should also mention if anybody would like a copy of that submission template that we uh, should looked at, um, please do again uh, request it through the uh, questions panel. We do have uh, your email address associated with your registration, so we don't need that. So if anyone would like the uh, submission template, please drop us a note. Um, uh, you will be receiving a link to the recording of this uh, uh, after the event. So, um, okay, let's take a look at uh, the questions. Um, first of all, I can see a question about the difference between chartered fellow and chartered member. Um, we mentioned these are the two different options available to you. Um, as Sue explained, the eligibility is that you need to um, be, a, be a CNG, ING or TPP holder with at least five years management experience to become a chartered manager. If you have at least 10 years management experience, of which three of these are at strategic level, uh, then you would be eligible to become a chartered fellow. And the um, application process actually asks you a number of questions at the beginning of it, which will tease out uh, some details about your management experience. And if indeed you tell us you have in excess of 10 years management experience, then you will be offered the opportunity to become a chartered fellow uh, rather than a chartered member. Okay, great. We've had a couple of requests come through for the uh, submission template. No problem. We'll send those afterwards. Um, there's a question here. I notice in the requirements to apply for charter management, the professional qualifications, qualifications do not include EngTech. Is this something that will change? At the moment, um, this offer is available to CEng and IEng um, because by mapping the uh, standards that are, you, you have to evidence for those, we're able to see that there is a sufficient management and leadership uh, experience uh, and evidence shown in those to meet our qualification requirement. At the moment, the EngTech uh, qualification doesn't meet, meet that uh, threshold. Um, so there are opportunities to um, apply for our, our wide range of management and leadership qualifications that are available, and you can find out more on our website. Uh, but at the moment, this is an offer for CEng, IEng, and uh, TPP. But at the moment, uh, the qualified route is not open to people with EngTech. Can, can I just add to that, Kevin, that yeah. um, we have... Um, We've not been running EngTech that long, but the, the quality, if you like, of our EngTech applicants has tended to be quite high and, and sort of verging on the could be ready for iEng in not too long a period. So we're very keen to provide help and support to EngTech holders who would like to progress on to iEng. And then, of course, once uh, that qualification has been gained, then the, the Chartered Manager becomes an option. Great. Okay. Okay, the presentation mentions a 12 months assessment period. Does this apply to the interview route only or the written submission route? Basically, it's for either route. So uh, at the point at which you apply to become Chartered Manager, we, we um, give you an initial 12 months to, to complete that process. Uh, and if you go the written route, then obviously it's up to you to submit that uh, assessment using the uh, template that we, we, we looked at. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, if you um, don't get around to doing it, there are regular prompts that you'll get from the Chartered Manager team to do that. For the uh, professional discussion or interview route, then that's something that you need to set up those um, uh, appointments with your assessor who will get in touch with you. Um, uh, but the same the same applies. In, in essence, you have 12 months to complete that process. Okay. Um, okay. Question here: How long do I have to wait to apply for Charter Manager after gain, gaining CNG? Um, you don't have to wait until you've completed your CNG or any of the other um, uh, qualifying awards. Um, you need to have five years management experience, but um, you can apply that. That is, doesn't have to be post qualification as CEng because you can be a, a 
accumulating that experience uh, as you're working towards the end. So no, you do not, don't have to wait until you've completed that. Um, it's great to see so many questions here coming through. Um, um, just bear with me. I'm trying to just re read through these. And uh, okay, if we don't get to all of these today, then I will. We will uh, aim to try and uh, uh, answer them after the event. Um, okay. Do I qualify? Can I qualify even if I have no no line management experience, but lots of project management? Absolutely. Um, project management is, is a form of management. Clearly. Um, and as I explained before, um, whilst many chartered managers do have direct line management experience, um, many don't. And clearly, as a, as a project manager, you will have to be able to lead people and influence them uh, in all sorts of ways. And so as long as you're able to demonstrate some of that in the application, then yes, absolutely, you can apply. Um, Another question here, what's the CPD requirement? Um, as you'll have seen, um, CPD is a key part of the Chartered Manager application process, but once you have achieved Chartered Manager, we do require uh, you to complete, uh, to, to keep CPD records and have them available should we uh, ask you to, to, to uh, submit them. We, we sample a proportion of Chartered Managers each year. But uh, it's important to stress we're not expecting you to keep a completely new, separate set of, of CPD records. If you're already maintaining a CPD record um, for CIHT, uh, then we're happy to take that. Uh, we're happy to take any electronic format uh, for a CPD submission, as long as it can show evidence of reflective practice. So we're looking for evidence that you have thought about your development needs, uh, you've planned to do something about them undertaken those planned activities and then reflected on the uh, learning experience you've had from taking those activities. Um, notwithstanding the fact that some CPD clearly can be unplanned as well. So, uh, so yes, we, 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 may, we, we do sample a proportion of charter managers each year to ask them to submit their records, but we're not expecting you to keep a, a completely separate set of records. Uh, we, we are in the, um, in the process of, of a sampling exercise at the moment, and it could very well be that some of the people who've dialed in today are actually involved in that. Um, so it, it's good to hear that, that you'll accept um, CIHT members, CIHT records uh, for, for, C, for Chartered Manager C, uh, CPD. Indeed, yes. As long, and clearly, they'll, they'll need to be evidencing some of the management and leadership development that they've done, but that'll be alongside the, the, the technical development that's been undertaken as well. That's great. Okay, uh, and then uh, uh, I think the final question we'll pick up here is, when does the CIHT offer end? Um, it doesn't. There's no intention to withdraw this. This isn't a sort of you know special promotion or anything. Um, we very much hope this will be a long-time partnership with CIHT to make this offer available to uh, eligible members um, for um, you know, for as long as as, 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 as there's a, de as a demand for it. Um, we, we're delighted to be working with CIHT. We, uh, we definitely th feel that as uh, professional bodies, CIHT and, and, and CMI can complement each other and work together. So um, no, there's, there's, there's no um, end date to this offer as such. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much to everybody for, for uh, attending today. It's great to see so many people interested in this opportunity. And my apologies again for the technical problems that we had at the beginning of the broadcast. Um, you will be receiving a link to the recording uh, shortly. Um, we'll be sending out the submission template to those of you who've requested it in the questions panel. And otherwise, um, I think it's just, uh, just left for me to say thank you very much for, for, for uh, attending and um, goodbye. Thanks, Kevin. Bye, everyone.